Welcome to Quick Stop, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Daniel Powell, Jason Alvey, and Tyler Spees. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host, Daniel Powell, speaking. Just want to let everyone know that Clickstoff is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com. Uh, check out Trollandtoad.com for hero clicks new and old. Uh, Trollandtoad.com is the world's largest hero clicks retailer. Use coupon code Clickstoff for 5% off your hero clicks order. Merchant and pre order items do not apply. Clickstoff, if you like what you're hearing today, Check us out at patreon.com forward slash clickstoff and consider supporting our efforts and our content. A uh, dollar and above gets you entered into our monthly giveaways. Five dollars and above gets you entered into our exclusive Discord server and monthly uh, HeroClicks training classes. Um, also, check out facebook.com forward slash clickstoff for our current giveaway, which is a $50 Troll and Toad web credit, three ways to enter, become a Patreon, become a new subscriber to YouTube channel of Clickstoff, and third one is just to comment your favorite keyword, uh, so check that out at facebook.com forward slash Clickstoff. And joining me today is Jason doesn't use a computer very much, Alvy. I use a computer every day, just not at home. <laughs> yeah. Right. Home. Uh, and Tyler got a new computer, Spees. Hey, yo. It's been a while. And uh, lastly, joining us today is Alex has survived the past month, Coos. That's true. I did survive. As did my computer. There, I made it yeah. thematic with everybody else. Right. Amazing. So, well, we are glad to have you on the podcast. Um, uh, you got a Cookstoff Casualties of War you all recorded earlier today, so I don't know if this will come yes. out. I don't know which one will come out before or after. Uh, depends on when you get the Casualties of War over to me. But mm-hmm. So, good to see you back up and going and recording. So, Thanks. Um, it's been fun. Well, I'll have to go into your... Uh, housewarming party later this year when your house gets rebuilt yeah that'll be interesting hopefully it's this year yeah <laughs> that's it later this year right yeah i hope it's this year okay that's... i got you yeah so you know i mean i guess out of all the things that could have happened from your tornado um a, a new house will be a pretty dang good outcome from that one yeah it, I mean, we're, yeah, we're going to be uh, we're going to be OK. I mean, our, we are staying in the same place, so we're going to rebuild our house and mostly for the yard. Unfortunately, we lost like half of the trees in the yard. So I'm going to spend a lot of money having to mm. plant a bunch of trees. And we we lost a lot of privacy, I guess. But we're still waiting to see what we can actually afford. Uh like, see, I don't. I've never built a house before, so I have no idea what houses cost for what size here in uh, Chattanooga. So, well, yeah, interesting to see. Yeah. So, depending on your build, I mean, we built our house that we're in. I mean, they have like an online tool that like clicks options on and off as the builder that we used, and this was ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, they had, a, you know, they had a nice little tool that went in and out and showed you your you know your payment and stuff live as you went through the whole thing up and down total house cost it was pretty sweet uh, hmm. yeah we we custom designed ours in a one of the, a, a computer program um and they're going to take it and put it in cad and see what it ultimately comes out as I, who knows maybe our demands are a little too big i mean i don't know if i mean i think a 500 square foot hero clicks room is reasonable but I mean, the building may small. Not, yeah, it's a little on the small side. Um, but you know, being able to host worlds at my own house is a goal. So that's mm-hmm. very central. I like that. 
Yeah, you know, pretty southern, yeah. but not too. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, when I win the lottery, I'm totally building a tournament venue right next to my house. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so nice. We could sleep. It will be if it ever nice. happens. All I gotta do is win the lottery. Just gotta win it. Yes. Yeah. Someday. So. Um. So today we're going to talk about a little bit of online stuff. Uh, we got a few good questions, or all of the good, all the questions were good actually. Um, but uh, we'll start out with some online stuff. Um, we'll start off with that, and then we'll go to ranking our objects, um, and then answer some questions. So let's start out with the online stuff. So McConnell Lamar kind of trigger, uh, kind of asked this, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it. So. Why aren't online tournament wins mentioned among player accomplishments as much as in-person tournaments? They are at least accessible, if not more so. Um, so I'll start off with uh, Tyler slacking and not playing online as much as he should be right now. Um, so bad Tyler. Um, but uh, I will be uh, uh, streaming two online uh, tournaments, the first one being the uh, Heroes Throwdown uh, 300 point modern post rotation. Uh, I'm playing an Avengers theme team with uh, Ultra Chase Captain Marvel, uh, Steve Rogers, Isaac, um, 75 point Thor, Chase Thor, um, Exo Specs, Spin Ring, uh, Avengers Map Bonus at 297 points. Um, and then I'll also be streaming the Yancey, the South Yancey Street. Uh, tournament, uh, which that's a 400 golden named theme team tournament. Um, I'm going to play uh, Eternals. It's limited, so no objects, no uh, resources, IDs, blah, blah, blah. It is allowing ETAs. So in that one, I'm going to be playing uh, Unimind, uh, Connelly, Isaac, um, Star Fox, Chase Star Fox, Silver Sable, Prime, Clayface with the um, with the red uh, identity trait on the plus five, and um, then I'm going to be playing Cyline Eternals, Guardians of the Galaxy Isaac, Guardians of the Galaxy Thane, and Mighty Thor, um, Cersei, and then all of the Trouble Alerts, uh, and then the Civil War ATA as well. So check those out on our uh, YouTube page. As I'm streaming those over the next few days, few weeks. Um, so to answer answer McConnell's question, so um, I typically will mention the Rock Online tournaments, uh, and we've mentioned those on the podcast as well. Um, who's winning those, and you know the win the win of maps and the qualifiers, because uh, those are the ones that most closely resemble an actual tournament you play the swiss rounds you play the top cut um now the heroes throwdown thing now i'm participating in it i love it it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun um you know a lot of good teams a lot of good play um now the main difference for me and this is what i want you guys to agree or disagree on a little bit is that i don't get in a regular tournament i don't get the time to review my opponent's teams, to verify their builds over the course of a couple of days, strategize, practice against them with my teammates, um, you know, do a deep dive on their dials, uh, think about strategies, um, and then get to play them. Now, and then second second point for you guys to talk about um, online. Um, is a lot more right I'm, I'm sitting in my house in my underwear or whatever shorts or whatever and um i you know, picture you just wearing overalls and nothing else yeah well that's a <laughs> that's a special <laughs> level of patreon you have to get for that just pm me for that one um <laughs> overall cam yeah overall cam but you know so yeah my point there is is that there's <laughs> When you go to an actual tournament, right, you know, a, a regional level, WKO level, you know, Nationals, Worlds, there's an amount of, I think there's three points I came up with, I thought in my head, 
there's being able to travel, right? So there's a level of ability to be able to travel. There's borrowing, buying, whatever your actual team to play. There's the skill and practice to get to that level um, of play, right? And then winning those level of tournaments. Um, and then fourth one would be the, the stress of the day. So it's a, it's a mental fatigue. It's a mental journey. Um, it's a gauntlet to get to the end of one of those things over one or two days. Um, so I look at an in-person tournament of a high level um, as being an overall picture of a fantastic HeroClix player, uh, especially those that win worlds, win nationals, top eight worlds, top eight nationals, top 16 nationals, that's whatever. Um, versus online, right? You don't have to travel. You don't have to, um, you don't have to necessarily own all of the pieces uh, for this post rotation stuff. Um, the stress level is a lot lower because you're in a comfortable place. Um, and it's just play. But, and so one could argue that just play is fine. Um, but my viewpoint is, to McConnell's question, it's an overall ability of a player to do all of those things and bring it all together over the course of a long day. I, I feel like it's just because they're working for in the last like, two months there haven't really been any major online tournaments. There hasn't been many online tournaments or in-person tournaments? Online, major online tournaments. Well, there has been. Yeah, I mean, there the, hasn't been up until now, really. Right, that's uh, I mean, the, the Gone Guy one and then the, the Heroes yeah, Throwdown. Were the, until, until, the last, like, until the last couple of months, there just hasn't been. Yeah, at least not very frequently. Not to diss Alex. <laughs> like, you know, Rock Online. You Leave know, it. Get enough <laughs> chat. They're just like. They're 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 not. It's not like a nationals event, basically. You know, it's it's it has it, had, it just haven't been big enough to 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 warrant a mention if you're talking about like obviously like some the best player list or whatever. Right. And and so, and I would say from like the gun guy and then this hero's throwdown that I'm going into, there's an asterisk, right? There's there's really good play involved in each of these matches that I've watched. So not a, not a dish on any of those, but they're able to practice and study and prep and mentally prep for each of their opponents' teams because they know what they're going to be. You know, I mean, there's not... there's there's a little bit of that though at nationals and worlds anyway. After the top cut, if it if it goes into a second day, yeah, I don't I don't see. But that. not as much, right? But there's, there's right. That, right. That, I'm that, saying that's like, I'm 12, that's like that twelve hours as opposed to like you know, 72 hours. Right. But I'm saying that that does technically exist at the highest level at the highest, like semifinals or finals. I mean, you know who your opponent is and you know what they've been playing all day. So that night you go home and you, or you go to your hotel and you're sitting there pulling their team out, looking at it further if you haven't and figuring out your first play. I mean, that happens now, but what you're saying is right. I mean, it's, they have more accessibility, more time, but that does happen technically currently. Right. But so I guess the point is, is like in that top eight scenario is a little bit different than being able to study and do all of that to get to that top eight level. Right. I mean, I, I would kind of what Tyler was saying. I mean, with the top, you know, the, the articles that come out, you know, ranking players. I mean, it's kind of it's I mean, this goes to a lot of different sports, too. I mean, people talk about your title wins nationals worlds uh rock cup i mean they talk about that nothing else no one talks about like oh you want a rock qualifier in may of 2016 or something like that it's like well okay who was at that qualifier because that matters so it's because that mindset is already there nobody's going to really treat these online tournaments seriously because until a nationals or i mean maybe if a states happens online then maybe but until nationals or worlds or something gets pushed to online, no one's going to treat it seriously anyway. Right. Now, I think I want to define the word seriously for me a little bit. Like, I'm paying attention to who's doing well in those tournaments. 
like um, oh gosh, I want to say his name wrong. Um, the, he's the guy running the uh, the heroes throwdown. Um, Julio Montanez. And I'm sorry, Julio, if I said your name wrong. I, I apologize. Uh, but Julio's doing the doing the heroes throwdown, and he won the Gone Guy one. So like that that's a new name for me, right? So now I'm like, right. what, what's Julio doing, right? So you know, he definitely pops up on the radar when someone that's not super well known. Um, you know, pops up and does something well. It's like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Let's see, let's see how he does the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see that. I, it, but it's just, it's the same thing. When he says, "Why does nobody bring up online tournaments?" It's because just in the past, there just hasn't been any online tournaments to bring up when you're talking about it. Right. Now, I mean, if Worlds happens online for some reason, you know, I'll be sitting in my chair and ready to go, I guess. And, and I mean, I think that's also your third point. Your third point has to do with the stress was not as high because you're sitting in your chair relaxing. I mean, I think your stress would be high if it was Nationals or Worlds. You'd be, I mean, you'd be a little bit more comfortable than normal, but you also know that the stakes are higher and... You have less chance to screw up, uh, less flexibility because it is nationals or worlds or whatever. Right. I mean, that's true. But like setting matters, right? You know, to me, mm-hmm. like I'm very familiar with my computer, my monitor, you know, how things are set up, how to use roll 20, how to get in there, how to rock and roll. Uh, I'm comfortable in my house, right? I don't have to worry about can I use the bathroom? Can I get to the bathroom? Um you know, my, my food and drink is ready. Um, you know, so there there's some percentage of those things that matter at Nationals and Worlds. Like, if I if I need to go number two during Nationals and that bathroom right outside of the gate at Origins is, uh, is super packed and super busy, right? Like, that's going to be on my mind and distracting me the next round, potentially. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, every, every every little percentage matters when it comes to that. So, um, But what I would say is these online tournaments are great practice. They are a great way to look at massive teams across the country, across the world, in preparations for hopefully when we get to get together in person later this year and play. Yeah, I I always get excited when I see someone who's been playing Rock Online consistently do well in a tournament. Like, just because I know they've been putting in the time to play games. So, I mean, I know people are at home and they could be in their local venue and, you know, whatnot. But just seeing some names like, oh, they made top eight at Nationals or whatever. It's like, that's cool because I feel like part of that has to do because they took the time to practice online and play against reasonably good players and right so yeah i mean and that's a great point right i mean and again you know tyler i don't know if you're quiet again or uh your voice your volume's low but i mean tyler wouldn't have been able to win worlds in 2018 without his online play so it's not diminishing the value of it uh it's just particularly from wins online tournament wins that we're talking about right it's just not like it, it's obviously helpful but it's just there's just how that's why they just don't talk about it because they haven't been there very big. Right. Future, talked about We've never had to value it before until. Right. Yeah, I mean, if if you did a player ranking, it's like not going to be like, oh, this guy's number one because he won four online qualifiers and the heroes throwdown. It's, I mean, you have to win the nationals or worlds or something, but it's going to get you talked about, like what Dan said. You know that you're going to be like, oh, let's keep this guy in mind because he comes from Idaho, but. He's been playing, he's been winning some events, and he'll be flying out the Nationals, so we need to keep an eye, because he's a good player, he just hasn't been able to play in things normally. Maybe he's a fresh person on the scene. So Yeah, exactly. So Yep. So I think that's a that's a long answer to a short question. Yep. Um, but I you know what, and I would I will end it with this. I am certainly one thousand percent glad 
that I have been able to play online with folks from around the country, around the world. Um, and it's been great to keep in contact with folks that I would normally be able to see in person, keep in contact, keep and play with them online during this time. <clears throat> so, uh, let's talk about objects. Cause it looks like we're going to be, uh, ending our call with, uh, mystical and, um, black widow. So let's, uh, let's get to the meat of our sandwich here with objects. So when I when I when I thought about objects, I thought we were losing a lot, and percentage wise, we're not losing a lot, but we're losing some really powerful ones with rotation. I mean, percentage wise, I mean technically we're losing sixteen, twenty, twenty six. A lot of stuff in Mighty Thor. Yeah, we're losing technically twenty six objects. Yeah. yeah. But there's just, a lot of good ones that are staying. Yeah. yeah they are. So, so I think in regards to our ranking, I want to talk about playing these objects loose. So loose, like like just on the map. Okay. Because there's a whole different ranking of ranking them within like, should you play the time gym on uh, Gardner versus Captain America or that uh, sort of thing? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. Right. Or should you use astronomer power gym or, you know, reality gym, right? You could make an entire episode of – or entire segment of this breaking down astronomer, right, and which gyms you should probably play with him for which situations, which is something we might do later in another episode. So but before we talk about objects, do we want to talk about what we think the percentage is now after post-rotation that your object is going to get destroyed or stolen? As opposed to what it was pre-rotation, because that might change our my vote. Because you know, there's a lot of light objects now. I wouldn't even think about playing, but post-rotation, if the percentage is now more 20% to 30%, as opposed to the 60 to 70 that my object will get shot or stolen with an ID. I mean, that plays a lot into my rankings for items now. I think so. I think like. You know, your top teams being like Avengers, JLU, or JL, um, you know, the Widow-based Avengers team, um, you know, Mystical. You know, I don't I don't think that your object is in a lot of danger. Okay. I mean, I think they have to put a lot of effort into stealing your object. So the ones that we think consistently can are the I think that we talked about Jason can Jason Weingart can yeah uh, it's not great but it can I, I think it's got to put your character at so much risk because if you destroy my exo specs and then I just go out and destroy your Jason that's not quite worth it yeah right yeah. But it does play into if, mm-hmm. it does play into things like the Infinity Gauntlet, which is a lot more points. To whether okay, do I risk it getting stolen? Yes. So. And like you know, at the for those outlier folks, do they think Ferengi Salvage Crew will be played? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it makes it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's an important part of the team building to say. <laughs> If I play this object, is my strategy so wrapped around it that if I randomly play a Ferengi Salvage Crew in round one, will I auto lose? You never know. Maybe we'll get a bunch of pirates in Fantastic Four and the Carnage because there were yeah. tons of pirates in those, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. That's the only keyword yeah, Ferengi Salvage Ferengi Crew. Ford. I know. <laughs> That's the only other keyword they have is pirate. Yeah. Adrox. <laughs> oh. We be hate, be hating on the Ferengi all the time, man. Gosh. Okay. So, so you know what? I think I think you made a good point. Um, you know, Alex, I, I think I would go ahead and start with the gauntlets being very low on the list. So that's the two Infinity Gauntlet. I would say the two Infinity Gauntlets and the two Cosmic Cubes. 
um, being pretty dang low on the list. Because not only are they 30 points, they eat up a huge portion of your build. The downside is if they get stolen or destroyed, puts you at such a great disadvantage to start out with. Yeah. It, yeah. I even mm-hmm. even with the new, I just I don't know if I could risk 30 points on a team just being evaporated. That just <laughs> scares me too much. Right. So then, so I don't know, and, and then I think Jason, you went through and actually gave them all numbers, right? And I didn't give them numbers so much as I kind of just went through and made a list of maybe what I thought was okay. best to worst, so that loosely, like, right. you know. Does, so does anyone disagree I don't, I don't, that, the, that the gauntlets and the cubes are towards the bottom played loose? I agree there. Yeah, their point value just makes them at the bottom, I feel like. Right. So, I think the next thing that I want to talk about is a word of warning. So, my team uh, for this um, Heroes Throwdown event is at 297 points. And I purposely did not play this tire stack or the barrel. Um, So, as a reminder, the barrel or the new WKO objects... The barrel says when it's uh, used in a close attack and hits after resolution. The uh, character can use Force Blast at no cost to target a hit character, but double that amount of knockback at two points. The tire stack is a heavy. Uh, that says when this object is used in a close object attack that hits until your next turn, a hit target character modifies its attack negative two and gains immobile even if this effect is lost. That's funny. I didn't think about it. It's like you're... Uh, Stacking the tires on top of them and like making them like, uh, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> <what it is. laughs> that's neat. Um, so I would say, I, I, so when I posted my team in that Discord, I got a few questions pretty quickly, you know, why didn't you play the tire stack or the barrel? And it's like, you know, I don't have a particular strategy that would use those, um. And just to use them to fill points is not worth it Um, because they can be used against you in such a manner. Um, So those those things are bad to be used against you. Um, So just don't include them. There's nothing particularly wrong with being at 297 points uh, in this post-rotation meta, I think, depending on what we get in Carnage. but that, that's my thought on tire stack and barrel. I also think that they're lower on the list as well to just be played in general. Um, only if you have a strategy to use them should you use them. Right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can lose to a TK attack, right? <laughs> well, it has to be a close object yeah, attack. Like well, they can still destroy it in a, in a TK attack. Right. Well, I mean, there's a reason mm-hmm. why a majority of the Thor objects were never used, and that's because they all relied on close attacks. Like, if you think of Mace, mm-hmm. not Mace, if you think of Hammer, you think of uh, Frey, Enchant- not Enchanted Crowbar, but some of the others where it's like, hey, if you hit with a close attack, this happens. Yeah, sure. It's like, yeah, that's not worth it because i have to really prepare and there's better objects for close attack so right yeah no you're you're on this you're on the right you're on the right track there so just don't fall into the trap of hey i need to fill three points let me throw this tire stack on there yeah without id cards for that small point filler anymore it's just not always worth it right now, is there a scenario? You said the which one? The barrel or the tire stack is a light object. Uh, the barrel is a light. Is there a scenario where you use um, a Jason Pog or something to you go across the map, you take, you pick it up, and you use it on somebody as a close attack? You could. Yeah, I mean you could, but that, but then again, that goes into the point of if you have a reason to use it. You can include it, 
Right. He's just saying if you don't have a plan for it and you have three points left, don't put it on. Well, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking like we're we're not just putting on the at the bottom of the list because you don't want to waste points with it. I mean, we also are doing the list off of how usable are these objects. And at first glance, they look bad because True. close object attacks are hard to do because it's a, you have to actually do an object attack, not just, hey, I use it in a normal attack. It has to be an object attack. So um, it has to right. be close. So I'm trying to think of scenarios. Is there scenarios you can reasonably use them? I don't think so, because I think all of your close attackers are going to be using Flurry anyways. That being uh, yeah. a, a Wendigo or a, an Immortal Hulk. Yeah. Um, you know, your um, like your Widow Initiate doesn't have this, doesn't have sidestep to pick it up. True. Um, and then Widow herself is going to be... Um, running, shotting the the chase, or um, right. So you're almost like, and and that's a special quake that unequips things, right? Right. So you're not gonna be using. And they're also just one-time effect uses that give up points. Yeah. Yeah, because if you miss, you just lose it all, right? Yeah, and you give. Yeah. And if you, and if you hit, it only it only works for one turn or whatever, right? And then it's gone, and you lost three points. Yeah. Yeah. What was if it stuck like well, handcuffs? Was that what they did it? That was the one where if you hit them, it, it stuck on them, right? Yeah, it did. But that lasted more than yes. one turn. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's if it was. Yeah. Like that, be cool. Right. I get what you're saying. Yeah, if it's an ongoing effect, sure. Yeah. Like the mini slayer, like if you hit them with that, that's an ongoing effect. Annoyance, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, let's, you know, it's funny. That's a good, it's a good segue, Jason. Um, I think mini slayer has the ability to go up in um, value, up in value for playability. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, it was already sort of kind of used with um, the skull, uh, like with the across the yeah. map mind control. Um, but now, with some of the just more objects being used in general and less full colossal teams at the moment, um, it might actually be worth it. I'm not sure if it's, if it's worth it or not. Could you ever see? Well, yeah. Could yeah. you ever see yourself playing it with the Batman team, Prime Batman? It was just running through my head. I don't know. Maybe. Yes. Yeah, no. It, does it work in multi attack? It would only go to one. It says when this character hits. After resolutions, you may equip this object to a hit character. A hit character. So if you if. I mean, you would only use it in very certain scenarios to where it, it's yeah. someone who has to have the object or someone who's very, like, maybe K- Kobik. I mean, Kobik with the cube. Like, aren't they equipping Batman with stuff normally? Like, XO or something else? Yeah. Like, XO or Spin, typically. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. Making that team. But something like that where it would attack everybody. That's why it was used with... Skull. Yeah. You could do it on the yeah, but I think so. I think it moves up, right? Then yeah, where it's, it's at, better, sure. it's mm-hmm. definitely better. Yeah. Sure. Um. So let's just go ahead and start with the Batman, right? So here's what I would here's what I want to say it. Um. And Alex, it sounds like your mic is like rustling up against something. By the way. No, I'm, that's not me. That's not <laughs> me either. It might be you, Jason. Yeah, my mic's not moving. My, my mic's my beard. Uh, yeah, it's your beard, Jason. <laughs> um, so, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking in thirds. Bottom third, middle third, top third. Well, what we could uh, do is we could just like list every object and then go through like one through ten on how usable it is. Be... Yeah, I think th- I think that's fine. So let's let's start that's with Batman. Fine. Let's start with Batman. Um, Christmas present. I give this a seven. I like the Christmas Crap. present a lot. Really? What? I like it, the Christmas present. It's crap. 
No, it gives you a not. random effect, and I'm not like a tooth. I'm like, it, 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 yeah, and you can, and it can go away if you roll bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean it can, but if you roll, firstly, if you roll a six, like that's just like that's Black Widow esque what it can do, right? Can't be given any actions except move actions. Um, and then the two through five is a free in cap. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that's a free that's a free attack. So anything that triggers off an attack. Like, if you have anything that's, like, special ability, when this character attacks, X happens. That will trigger off of that. You, you were able to throw the tank with this, and I was actually looking at it for a little bit until they introduced... I can't remember what it was. Something else will give you a free attack. But you could throw the tank from across the map with this for free. Like, carry up, free in cap, then throw the tank on it. I don't know. I like this ability. <laughs> I mean, the only, thing, the only thing is that the in cap says with a range value of three. Yeah, you have to be close. I agree with that. So uh, I, I think for me, the range, like it's setting a range of three, and then if you roll a six, it's within six. That loses it for me. Like if it was, if it used your range values, then absolutely I'd be game. Because then I would put it on uh, whoever has much better range than three and roll the dice three. and see what happens. Yeah. So So maybe it's yeah. like the top of the middle third. I don't like it. Mm. Nah, I'm putting it. I'm putting it, it bottom. bottom third. Yeah, bottom. Uh, third. I don't. I don't like anything where I can roll and it like goes away because I rolled bad. Because invariably, that's exactly what will happen. Right? So we're to, to to be fair, we're saying bottom third is this, this, this thing is play. bottom third is you should I mean, probably this thing not is five. This thing is five points. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you not is so good. point on a Mandarin ring? Mandarin ring will do exactly what you want it to do the entire friggin' time and not go... It will do the same thing, but it won't do it as well. Would you rather have a ring that gives you in cap or this, which gives you free in crap five out of six times? Or four You're right, times. in crap. That is yes. exactly what <laughs> the in crap is. I, I, I would rather have the ring that gives me in cap that I know I can use every turn that won't go away if I Man, roll one. Man, you got, you got to roll the dice. This is a dice game, Jason. <laughs> yeah, well, since when, did, since when did, like, you know, variability become a thing that you wanted on a top-level team? Like, you want something that's going to work when you want it to work. I mean, no, no, no. Uh, Faust, Faust was good. Yeah, variability is fine <laughs> as long as the odds are in your favor. Wait a minute. Faust didn't well, randomly like, die when... <laughs> Faust didn't randomly yeah. like, die because he rolled bad. <laughs> That's how you found yeah. Faust, guys. I figured think it's the same out. Thing. Oh my god. I like now, bottom, bottom third. Bottom third for sure. Uh, go no. go back to sleep, Tyler. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just woke up. What are you talking about? Man, we're only on our first object, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Alright, um, <laughs> right, let's talk about Scarface. Oh, crap. Worst item. What? Whatever. I hate Scarface. <laughs> Absolutely Whatever. not. Scarface is good. No, it's right. not. I think, I right, think so, Scarface is criminally underused. Oh like, my god. Right. So, so here's a couple of unique things I like about Scarface. <laughs> uh, energy explosion is great, especially if you equip it to a multiple bolt character. Uh, range combat expert always good. Um, where I think it comes into a neat a uh, usage is its minimum range value of four. For a hypersonic character. Yep, that's where I was going. Yeah, what? yeah. Why do you care about that? It gives you a range if you don't have any, like. So and you have it, and it's the always... other thing. <laughs> Get you three range. You can't use that in the middle of a hypersonic though. No. I, I don't know. Like, does that matter? Isn't it half to two then, or is it not? No, no minimum. It's minimum. Minimum's the last thing, so you do your range, then uh, replace. Oh, yeah. Your, yeah, you replace, then modify, then do minimums. Okay. That's. I mean, okay. to be fair, though, it's ten. That's ten the thing. points. It's no way. It is ten points. Yeah. Now, uh, this is bottom third. Easy. This is a two for me. I mean, so, it's. A, yeah, mm, it's okay. I'm but saying I mean, so. So are the gyms. The gyms. I'll put it in the middle thirds. Yeah, the gems are ten points. It's it's good. more offensive than the gem. So if your team has solid defense and you need to add offense, Scarface not, may Scarface may be up your alley. 
Not more offensive than the power jump. Gems are indestructible, though. That's something to keep in mind. Yep. Yeah. I'm not using this thing over the power jump. I think I think the minimum range value of four does have a place because if you're playing something that is a, a bruiser uh, that does doesn't have range and you would like him to have range for those plasticity uh, plasticity pieces, Scarface would be good to give. I think, but I think it would have a, a place because that effect is pretty unique. But I don't see it right now. All right, so. Let's just go with hopefully an easier one in next, guys. Let's go. Let's go with hopefully an, an, an easier one next. Venom harness. That's fine. Venom, Venom harness on is... Venom harness on Daredevil is still completely playable. Venom harness on Immortal Hulk yeah. is still completely playable. That's top third, right? We all agree. Do we all agree that Venom harness is still top third? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd say the lower end. It's not like the best item in the game, but it's always really good. Correct. Yeah. All right. All right. We're good there. All right. Good. That's an easy one. Top third, Venom Harness doesn't lose anything from rotation, nor does it really gain anything. Um, Batarang. If it wasn't limited to four squares, it'd be great. If it was pre-erotic. You can make an attack and it ignores everything, right? Is that what it does? Yes. Within four. Yeah. Within four. Within four. In line of fire. And a 50% chance it just KOs itself. Oh, that's. Yeah, which also sucks. But on Batman, on the Batman, it doesn't do that. But. Yeah, I don't think on its own it's good, but I do think that Batman is overlooked. Yeah, I think it's great on that Batman. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, right? That Batman could be playable, but as a loose, it's no. not exactly playable. No, uh, bottom. Yeah. Um, all right, so that concludes Batman. So Earth X was our next big group of equipment. Um, let's start out with another easy one, guys. Octopus Arms. Bottom third, it's crap. No one ever uses it. <laughs> you guys are you guys are all being what facetious. What a piece of garbage, God. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the octopus arms are great. Uh, yeah. I think the I think the octopus arms uh, increase in value somewhat. Right. They were already top third. Um, you know, Vulture, Hulk. Um, you know, even things like super rare Captain Marvel, just. Being able to get around those plasticity pieces, um, this thing has a lot of good value. Um, and there's probably other charge pieces that we haven't even thought of as a team yet that this is good on. Yeah, um, this is the premier close combat piece that goes on anything that you want to use. As yeah. Well. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I think it takes the value of Mjolnir uh, as the close combat piece. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, we talked about the mini slayer a little bit already. Um, Venom symbiote. Still top third. I think it's so the really top third. Yeah, yeah since it's sure. not going to be easily shot. Yeah, it gets a little better. Yeah, it gets a little bit better. It gets playable again over the mm-hmm. Mandarin ring, maybe. Now I think the Venom symbiote competes with the Mandarin ring quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It so does. it. De- if you're de- if you're defensively playing it, I think the Mandarin ring, the Remaker rings the play. If you're going on an offensive piece like Super Rare Captain Marvel, the Venom symbiote's the better play. Yeah, the auto breakaway makes a difference. See, I don't. I almost wonder if the ring is going to be played more because this is going to sound dumb, but because it's five points and the symbiote's four, yeah, because good. we lose <laughs> what well, we lose IDs. And so two student IDs, Venom Symbiote, 10 points. So people are tied, like having round numbers for some reason for <laughs> the teams. And so they might see, oh, well, I'm still getting shape change, but poison is more offensive. So I'll take poison with the ring. I think you've got to, I think you've got to like become woke, open your third eye. Yeah. 
Open your third yeah. eye out. Yeah. Long yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we just got to get past that. The auto breakaway is really big for this thing. Yeah, I think don't worry about that one point. It's definitely, I think it's better, but unless you want to use another ring, that's the value that the extra point brings you. Right. Yeah. Um. All right. So web shooters. See, maybe this is why you want to play the symbiote so you have enough points for the six point web shooters. <laughs> this item is crap. I'm so <laughs> sad. There should be a good web shooter. Uh, it, it gives it. It, it gives him mobile. That's that's, yeah. a, that's a really good ability. Hey, you know what? This is actually way way better than the Christmas present because it has a range value of four instead of three. It's it's instead of three. Thirty three percent better. So, oh my god. Yeah, so totally way better than the Christmas present. And it doesn't KO itself. That is true. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Even if they have two action tokens and you can give them mobile and take the damage. That's yep. Cool. You give them a mobile, they still get the hand damage, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a mobile is just a really good is a really good thing to be able to deal out. Yeah, maybe that's a good way to deal with Widow is giving her a mobile. Yeah, but you're within four then. And you have to use an action to do it, and then you're just there. No, 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 no. So it's his, it's no, like no, no. Third, it says. I think it's definitely moved up. But. Yeah, so you have to use within, you know. So it's a maximum range value of four, you know. But if you can, if your team can get in and get out, that's the that's the thought process there. Yeah, I think the only thing this would be good against is um, Immortal Hulk. It would it would do really well against Immortal Hulk. Right. But if your team has a strategy, I think, of getting in and getting out, like, uh, you know, on a Mr. Oz-based team or something like that, I think you could be okay. Yeah. I don't like it. I, don't like it. I, think, I think it's slowly moving up to mid-tier. Maybe. I think. Yeah. I just think so, so here, here's yeah, the thing. So, so the Spider-Man web, whatever that one was, um, that gave Leap Climb. Um, I have to think, you know, think inventive, think if you don't have access to everything, because that leap climb web shooter thing, um, was used on, um, clone shredder, uh, from some of the folks overseas. Um, so think about if you don't have access to anything, think about how you would incorporate a web shooters into your team. And... I'm going to let you guys talk about the Beetle Pod. I need to use the restroom real quick. Um, I think the Beetle Pod is probably bad. No. Um, case for it. Especially maybe it's bad. Shot. It doesn't do what I need it to do for that many points. I don't care about plus two speed on anybody right now. Like, if, The only person I could think of this is like you could do it with Happy Hogan. To give him plus two speed, but mm-hmm. if I'm doing that, it does give him, give him. It does get toughness as well. Right, but it, it gives a reducer if you don't have anything. But um, I, I've always I've always said with the beetle pod, its primary use is if you have a keyword that has no taxi whatsoever, and, I and you could you just need that, one. But right now we have the space gem, which just outclasses this. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, as far as for a taxi, can you put it on like the uh, the motorcycle widow? I think she can be equipped. I think she's a standard character, right? Uh, yeah, standard would be equipped. Yeah, so. yeah. Could be okay. Huh? I mean, this gives her if you're trying to do that that whole yoinky, you know, the whole killbox thing. It's plus two speed. It's flight, and she doesn't have a reducer. Uh, so. Yeah, that's not awful. I still don't think it's worth the points and they're probably better options but that's a good use for it I guess I mean I guess if the meta switches to where light object special objects are just stolen with penguins all the time like if Tyler makes that popular again then maybe oh, it's heavy. oh it is a heavy it is that kind of makes it worse it's a heavy it, yeah it does a bit it, it's only if the meta switches that way is it going to be relevant unfortunately I think yeah. it doesn't rotate, right? No. No. No, it doesn't. Okay. So 
So not this yeah, it's time. one of it's one of those things. So I, I think that goes back to the point we were talking about originally: is make sure that the object is not so entirely credible, incredibly relevant to your team strategy that if you lose it, you just lose. So yeah. you know, penguins are still a thing. I haven't seen much of them yet because I don't think we even have. I think people like to play it with a penguin. Um, Tyler, Tyler obviously didn't and has done well with it, but. Um, all right, yeah. so what does that leave us here? Uh, uh, goblin glider. The Goblin Glider. Oh, I yeah. Goblin so glider. I, I think the Goblin Glider is just fine in the top, the top third. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think it's, I think it's more to give a character running shot than it is to give them hypersonic speed. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think it's about where the Venom harness is. It's always going to be useful. It'll just never be the best item, but it's, it'll always have a use. In it. Tell me this. When was the last time you guys saw one get played? Um, uh, uh, don't remember. <laughs> I played... I think Nate was even, I actually with him like a month or two ago. Well, Nate, Nate doesn't count for the, because he actually experiments with teams. <laughs> like, I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking... I'm not trying to say it's not a good object at all. I'm just saying... We Everyone talks it up, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's a great object. I don't see it. I don't see people playing it. So is right. it just one of those that's like, well, the better player, the better figures already have running shot or hypersonic, so we don't have a, a specter scenario where we really wish they had running shot? Like, well, is it so, that? like, what I looked at, um, so where I think it fits in is, like, so Captain Marvel Ultra Chase doesn't only has, has uh, phasing running shot, or I'm yeah. sorry, fa- phasing pulse wave. So I looked at giving him the Goblin Glider instead of Exospecs, but it wasn't it. Uh, it was a light. It's a heavy oh, compared to a light. So you have to have a good way to equip it, and I didn't have a good way to equip it. So I think that's what makes it towards the bottom yeah. of the top of the top third is that you have to be able to equip it, and you have to be able to put it on a character that's deserving of a, like a running shot pulse wave. And we're losing Mangog, who was the main method of equipping heavy objects at the beginning of the game that's correct yeah and the yeah, and, so the, I, and the what tyler eight batman. oh eight batman yeah rip yeah yeah so it's just one of those i i guess it is bottom tier unless you just have that one figure like ultra chase uh captain marvel or i mean i don't know who else just desperately needs running shot and doesn't have it Doctor Strange Chase. I still think it's. Mm. It, I think what it gives is good enough for the points. There just might not be somebody right now that can use it. Right, and then if it there's someone bring, that can, if there's someone that can use it, yeah, yeah, if there's someone that can use it, there's just not a good way to equip them right now. Get the TK I mean, basically. I mean, Green Arrow was the main right. user of it for a while. Right. Because he only had a sidestep. But it's... We don't have anybody now. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's just going to sit there. Also, I guess it also depends if we get some other easy method outside of TK to equip objects, heavy objects. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the important point there would be Eitri would be your other um, use for this guy. Yeah. But most of the time, Eitri's being used to equip other things. Yeah. Um. Uh, she has Avengers Initiative, though, so she basically has what she needs. Actually, I, I guess I'll say this. I hope we don't... I hope this stays at the bottom and we don't get an amazing figure that WizKids decide to give phasing tele- teleport instead of a move and attack. So I hope we don't get in a position to where we have to use this. Oh, you can give this a Human Torch. That's pretty good for Hypersonic. Yeah, Probably, I mean, you true. do have like there is a twenty point character that has sidestep and super strength that you can use to, te- to, to equip it, but um, you know, you, he doesn't have he has a, doesn't have any good keywords though. What? Who is it? Oh, the uh, the Hydra uh, Earth X number ten. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. He has sidestep and super strength, and uh, he's twenty points, but he only has Hydra and Earth X keywords. Uh, if you're worried about theme team. I think the problem with the 
the problem with the glider is that everybody who has running shot has running shot powers that hypersonic can't use. Like if you've got a running shot precision strike, then maybe this would be good on it. He but would other just like hypersonic because of his trait, though. Right. I mean, hypersonic would be an. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Human Torch would be an exception. He would be one that would be okay with. But is there a lot of running shot precision strike? It's the only thing I could think of with hypersonic. Yeah. So. Or someone has randomly has running shot super strength. <coughs> well, you can't use that with hypersonic. The, knock. the, the knockback. Oh, no, oh no, the no. knockback. I got you. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's just one of those things to keep in. To, it's waiting in the wings. Right. The dream case would be like if, like, if Whiskers releases a character with running shot that has like a trait that activates off of a close attack that's really good, like then you pull it out your goblin runner. Right. So let's talk about the gems <laughs> next. So we've got seven gems. You just say ego's not good by itself. Yeah, I think ego. So within the self, the, the ego's at the seventh to be played on the main force. Um, I mean, he's fine on Thanos, obviously. So, what's the sixth gem to be played loose? Mm, space? No, I think space is higher. I think if I had to guess, yeah. mind play, gem. playing loose would probably be the mind gem. Yeah. Just because we have a ring that gives mind control? Ah! Power yeah. gem? No, we no, have a. Well, like, we, I don't know. It gives mind and it gives mind control in cap and in cap and plus one attack. There's a lot of objects that give in cap. Plus one attack's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I think if you I think the plus one attack is good, but there's not a lot of characters that other than like Jason that does things off of mind control. Um, so you'd want a good mind control character. So I think it kind of falls into the same situation. But it, it gives Leviathan. mind control. It gives mind control. I know, right. but you but you want if a character is just says let's say let's just say your character has running shot and triple targets, right? Are are you likely going to want them to do damage or running shot and mind control? So it has to have some effect that's above and beyond that you can use with mind control. See, are we being swayed by the power gem because of how strong it is on astronomer? Because no. But that's the thing. We like it because of the modified damage plus one. How often do we use close combat and range combat expert? I think power gem is really good on because you can charge flurry and then close combat expert. Mm. On, yeah. on, on who? And in mortal Hulk. Hulk. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, the, but that's one other instance. I'm just think, I'm just looking at it from modified damage plus one, modified attack plus one. Those are both cancel each other out because they're both great. Either no, one. Damage is twice as good as the other. You can't do damage if you can't hit anybody. I'm saying a plus one to damage is twice as good as a plus one to other stats. That's why people say you can do plus two to stats except damage. But plus there's not, to damage there's not many is, of those anymore. We like, lose Star Fox and a few others. Like, as a whole, plus one to damage is the most valuable stat to put increases in. It's it's the smallest value on average, so getting something okay. into it. So if you give the modify plus damage an edge you give close combat expert range combat expert edge over mind control and in cap in cap i could see but I, i'm just thinking there's instances that you want mind control because of retail there's Man, a lot of instances to, i wish you could give this thing to onslaught so bad that'd be so good i'm just thinking of so many instances that i sat here and was like i wish i had mind control because they decided to rock a bajillion retails, which I know we're losing some, but they're still going to be there. Yeah, my right. still mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you there. <clears throat> but I, I still think it's just outclassed by all of the other ones. You like power better than mind? I like power mind. Better also, than mind. doesn't get a plus oh, if you roll ten or higher, right? Mind. I'm sorry. Mind gets uh, mind allows you to uh, use mind control again at no cost. Oh, okay. And you could keep repeating that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's good for Tyler's Speed Dice. So. True. Um, but yeah, I mean, Power Gym does the penetrating damage, which I think is super powerful if you roll a 10. Yeah, that can uh, just change your game if you can. Mm-hmm. Stop. 
But with if you're playing the power gem, you're going to be doing six damage anyway. There's so many. I mean, stop, yeah, yeah, that's points. fair. That's fair. Also, if you could do it, like, if you give this to, like, Spider-Man and he gets his, you know, in cap for free and then you roll 10, that's just an extra damage on top of that. Something like that could be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and you, and the, the Spider-Man you're referring to is the PS4 Spider-Man from yep. Captain America. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. I still think it's pretty close, but I'm fine with putting mine below power. But I think I it's think closer. So. So I think what fits in into the fifth slot there, I think power is at number four. Um, and so in mind at number six, I think soul fits in at number five. What? I like. I think soul's top three. I like soul a lot. Well, I think if you were to like flop a two, like if I put space at third and soul at five, those two could flop depending on the argument. I, I never see anybody use Soul. I think we have enough good taxis that Soul is kind of redundant now. You mean space? You mean space? Space, yeah, sorry. Um, and Soul just giving plus one defense is really good. Like People use that on Thanos all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, so I think but that's a specific case, right, where you're playing it with Thanos. Yeah, but you're playing uh, with it just for the plus one to, a, to defense. Like Any right. carry with a high defense will like this a lot. Yes, yeah, so, and so, but I think space also gives other teams a transporter that they don't have. So I think there's some unexplored stuff with space. Like, again, I, I've talked about the celebrity team team giving Daredevil the space gem and carrying up Joker clones. Um, so if I was to just kind of like bet a little bit, <laughs> there's some stuff with uh, space gem um, that's not that's not quite been used yet. So are we? We're expecting with the death of Surtur, more tent poles. Are we expecting more tent poles, or less tent poles? Less because Widow erases their dial. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, most tent poles have decent dials anyway, though, right? Yeah, but they're also relying on like a symbio for shape change or whatever. Well, that, I'm thinking tent poles are going to equip Soul Gem. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the primary users of Soul Gem are people who have decently high defense. Raise mm-hmm. it up for more, and they can now steal it into the range. Yeah, you put this on like a like Ultron or something. But yeah, but I mean, Alt- but Widow also deletes that steel energy. Right. Yeah. You yeah. The plus one def- no, it's standard. Is it? Widow yeah, gives you just, base- yeah. You just. You still get plus one defense. No, yeah. Doesn't Widow do base stats? Am I crazy? Yeah, she she does. Okay. Yeah. So you don't get. Oh, that's right. That's right. She does. Yeah. Yeah. So you Widow's get no. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I, maybe with Widow in the short term, maybe, but I think it's still the premiere. If you play a tentpole, this is the best gem for sure, um, because you generally want to stack defenses on your tentpoles, and this is the only really defensive one, except, no, this is the only defensive one, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um... But yeah, so, but we I think we would all agree that maybe space comes in next, right? Um, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. For me, I I like power a lot, so I would put it third. Okay. Yeah, I still think space is the bottom of them, but okay, except for Ego Jam, but okay. Yeah, I mean that's okay. Um, so time gym is, I think we're all, did we all agree that time is kind of the second place then of all the gyms? Time and reality are the best two. Mm-hmm. I think that they're kind of, yeah. Yeah. They're interchangeable depending on what you got. If you got a theme team with no prob, right. then you use the time gym. If you have a theme team with a lot of prob, but no perplex, then you use the reality gym. Um, but now the reality gem of being able to just TK objects continuously potentially is really good. I don't know if it's really good. It is an added bonus that is good. Yeah. And then the extra bolt is also pretty powerful too. Yeah, it is. That is I mean, true. time gem keeping your roll from being re-rolled is pretty good too. <laughs> it is. But Ex- the- except for dice replacements are a thing. And Widow. Can't what does it say? Can't re-roll. 
Yeah, so her is, well, I think what you're saying is that if you roll below a four, it doesn't matter if you have the time gym because Widow says you can't re-roll. <coughs> um, yeah. I, I think the reality gives you more for the points, and so if you can use all of that, it's probably better. But mm-hmm. people like Rob, so <laughs> if you have no Rob and this is the way to get it, this is one way to get it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, reality gym's better now because you can put it on KC Power Wallet. And do yeah. stuff with it. <laughs> that that is true. That's that's a, that is a new WizKids rules update. Yeah. Um, but so in general, do we agree that all six uh, besides the ego gym, that all six gyms are at least top third of playability? Mm. I think some of them might fall in the middle. We got to put something in the middle. It's mostly because the rings are so playable for half the points. So, like, Mind Gem is great, but Liar is arguably better. So, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of with Tyler. Some of them might fall towards the middle because you can play two rings for the price of one gem. Okay. So if you've got if you got a team that has great stats or okay. someone that already has a ton of perplex. Then it's like I don't need that plus one attack necessarily. I might save five points and get a ring instead. I mean, it, it just depends. Yeah, I think the top should be like, you know, a team is built around having this object, or it's just universally good. And I don't think that mind and probably space fit into that. Mhm. Okay. Um. Sure. So let's talk about the Mandarin rings. This, this is a ought good to be one. Fun. Yeah, this ought to be fun. <sighs> so mm. I don't, I don't even know if you can rank them against each other because they do such different things and they all have such great in, uh, great cases of use. Can I just say I hate when I type in ring, sure. I get a bunch of Lord of the Rings things pop up. I don't like it. <laughs> you right. you have to type in Mandarin ring. Just okay, that's what you got to do. You know what? I don't want to, but that's a good yeah. idea. Well, if you don't want Lord of the Rings shit, then that's what you got to do. Okay, I got it. Can we just all agree that Gosh. we all wished the lightning ring did more than it does? No. I mean, I, I do, but I think it's good. I think it's fine. I just, whenever I hear the word lightning, I'm expecting, all right, it's going to give, like, energy explosion or, like, cool stuff. But, I mean, I know Incandescence already does that, but I, I'm imagining, like more than what it actually does yeah so i would say that if anything lightning's probably the 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 number i don't know what is it we have uh 10 it's the 10th ring yeah i agree 100 percent. what 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 do you think is the worst one then tyler i don't know but it can't be that one give me a second here it is okay. absolutely that one 100 we will absolutely give you a second then Spectral? I don't know. Maybe. No, I guess decision strike. Spin is, a, yeah. spin is amazing. So. Spin is amazing because it just gives you oh, TK yeah. and. Influence is not good. I don't like influence it. gets influence gets you off of activation clicks. Right. Influence gets you off of activation clicks. It damages other characters for just free. Um. It also triggers if you knock back a character, you can get attacks off that away. No, it doesn't. I mean, I, it, no, it doesn't work on energy explosion. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, if you use more than one bolt to target yeah. someone. Yeah, you have to yeah. dual target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get you now. Mm-hmm. But that's one of those things where it's not like universally useful. Because you can't always multi-target energy explosion. Influence is so dumb. I know Influ- it is. Influence activates Batman. I so know. That is why it's good now. I have to concede that point. If, if Lightning actually gave you an additional target, yeah. then I'd be game for it. It's like, here's an additional target. If you target two people, it'll increase it by one. Like That I makes mean, it I'm, way better. I'm thinking of it on Mandarin, who you can get this on. I, I would play this on Mandarin normally. Right, so yeah, we're we're yeah. yeah, 
we're talking about loose not playing him on the characters that you could play I, with. I yeah. agree. Then yeah, it's the worst. Yeah. So, so I think like the rest of them right are just like they have their own use, but they're all in the top third of play, right? I mean, liar goes on to um, danger and Magneto. Yeah, exactly. Um, or or yeah, sinister. Or I, I think I think there is a case for it to go on to Jason. Um, Maybe. Um, you know, Diamonic just. You know what? Maybe Diamonic is number nine because of uh, widows not being able to be targeted in stealth. So good against other stuff, but it might be. It's hard to place at night because you're right. They are all good in their own use case. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, like, what's the best combo of rings if you're gonna put a two on somebody? What's the best combo? I'm always a fan of Remaker Nightbringer. Yeah, that's mine too. Remaker Nightbringer. Those are the two best rings around. Um, and then like, so if you're looking at specific case examples, Jason, like Lightning Incandescent is good together. Mm-hmm. Yes, to very good. All together, the explosions. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if they're on the right character. Yeah, Zero's obviously great. Um, yeah, Zero's great. Spin's great. So I think that I think we can all say the top four is probably Remaker, Nightbringer, Spin, Zero. Like, they're just good on almost every single team. Yes. Giving Stealth, giving TK, giving Barrier, giving Shape Change Poison... That's probably going to be useful on every team. Liar, ah, eh, maybe. Uh, yeah, Diamonic, yeah, Diamonic, maybe if you're going to get Stealth. Spectral, only if you're really going to get Super Senses. So it's those four are the ones that are just most useful. Yeah, it's consistent. I agree. Alex, are your kids still yeah. awake? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it sounds like they're beating down your walls, <laughs> which is fine. We're uh, we're all used to this at this point. Yeah, but they're all. They're all like yeah. Um. So that leaves us with the Wiz Kids Le objects. Uh, because there, we didn't miss anything, right? Because we went, we talked earlier in a pre-show. We're not missing any DC objects, right? Right, no, we are the H no. dial. The oh, H yeah. dial. <laughs> the H dial. He's not good unless Robbie Reed uses them, so he's bad. Yeah, I mean, and then if you play Robbie Reed with it, you have to play the influence ring to <laughs> activate him. Probably, yeah. Because if not, he's nine attack, one damage. <laughs> with just the pass keyword, so good. GG. Robbie Reed's one of those ones I just want someone to win with. Man, I just want someone to not win with him. I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want to have to learn how that works. I don't want to have to, have to sit him across from me. Just nobody try it. All right, so I, can, I, I, never I, count, look at him. I counter to Tyler's team with <laughs> Robbie Reed, not because it's strong, but because it confuses. I Ty. just refuse to learn it. <laughs> no, I mean, but legitimately. I am totally, I'm totally playing that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, for what it's worth, like, I'll be honest, I fully expect someone to play like six Robbie Reeds at some point. Um, that sounds like an Adam Friedman team. Right, so, like, because, and I want to say that their intent would be nefarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all. Because just look at what Robbie Reed does, everything, that all the decisions you have to make for Robbie Reed, and you just do it six times. And that just eats up so much of the clock. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's a little bit annoying, actually, for what it's worth. Um, so I've said that before. I said it before Worlds. Um, and I'll say it again. I don't it's, know if it'll be good enough. Oh, it, it may not be good enough, but it, somebody could just do it as a for nefarious reasons. Unfortunately, no one knows if it's good enough because no one knows how the H dial actually works. Wants to try it. Yeah, everyone's like, "Ah, oh, that sounds good on paper." 
Right, but so you get to use one through two. You know, you get a different color power for each number. Um, so, and then, so you roll one d6 for the color, roll a second d6 for the combat type. Uh, one, an opponent chooses a two or three speed or damage, five or six. So you roll one d6 for color, one d6 for um, uh, a, a, the type of combat. And then Robbie gets to do it for free, and the equipped character gets to do it for power. The fact that if you do it to another character, they have to do it for power, so it's two turns to even get this thing randomly doing something for you. Um, that's what makes it not playable, really, uh, loosely. Let's just say, let's just say the best thing about the H dial is that it names the, the colors. It, yeah, it gives us light green as lime. Let's just. Lime. Let's just. Burn. Yeah, <laughs> lime or orange, like just fruit. They just like, yeah, let's name it lime this time. Well, and you know what? There was a huge <laughs> discussion beforehand. Of like, is impervious gold or brown? It's gold, right? It's, no, brown. it's brown. No, it's got to be gold. It's brown. It says oh, red. Oh, no. Tyler, 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 I'm with you. It's totally gold. Whoever said it's brown was drunk when they wrote yeah. it. So. We are not listen to WizKids official channels on this one. Come on. Wait a minute, Tyler, aren't you like, yeah, color, for... aren't you colorblind? Y- yes. <laughs> but it's brown, it's gold. It's brown, gold, colorblind. That's I a thing, like, careless. I feel like they called them gold powers when they first came out. I have no idea. Uh, All right, I'll look it up while you're doing this. Uh, All right, so. I feel like there's a conspiracy to not call them gold. It's gray. This is dumb. Okay, I hate this even more now. This should it's be it's gray with an E, not an A. Oh, it's even... <laughs> okay. So, let's talk about the uh, three WizKids Marvel objects. Um, I was going to double check to make sure we didn't miss any of those. Um, the Punisher van retired, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it will retire. It will retire. <sighs> what does this... So, let's just... I want to take just... 10 seconds to just say I wish the Punisher van objects could have been played loose because they would have been absolutely freaking phenomenal to play loose. They were super cool. Yeah. By the so, way, Punisher, Punisher van retired last year. Oh, did it? Yeah, it's a, it's a 2016. Okay. Yeah, double rip. So, um, Corvus Glaive is pretty bottom tier. Um, there's Why only two, there's two use cases that I have for it to make it not terrible. Um, the first being, um, full point or for Black Panther, uh, the, um, switch click Black Panther, the battle world chase, the once per turn, once per game regen to get him back up on dial um, not off his stop clicks, obviously, but um, Can he, he can't be healed off his stop clicks. Uh, but but as long as you don't free click to a click that turn, right. you can say go from four to one again. Um, so I think there is a at least a use case to consider there. Um, the second use case for the Corvus Wave is on Eddie Guerrero. Okay, so whenever he does his three amigos, um, it's a triple flurry, which you can use blades with, but he only does three damage. Oh, he does a maximum of three damage? He does a maximum of three damage. So now, when you roll blades, if you roll a um, one through three, your damage is penetrating. So you have a 50% chance of doing two or three penetrating damage or just three normal damage. So there's no downside to rolling it, but you can get two to three penetrating damage. So is the happy spot with this characters who have normally deal three damage or four damage? I don't know. I don't know. I think, I, I think the use case is only just Eddie. So whatever the case is for Eddie. Well, no, because I, I think you're didn't, on something. Didn't... Go ahead, Jason. Didn't Jay make a really good case for using that on on the, the cheetah on the last episode? Cheetah. Yes, because their blades can't be outwitted. 
with the uh, Wakanda map bonus. And she gets to re-roll her blades. And... Right. So it's like one of those things. It's like your downside is your damage is penetrating. Your upside is that you're doing more damage. So, uh, yeah, I think that works with anybody who already deals four damage and has flurry. Because four damage, you roll a, a three or less. At the minimum is going to be three because of how blades works. Yeah, three so, penetrating damage. Yeah, yeah, three penetrating or mm-hmm. you roll a four, five, six where you're doing the same or more damage. So four damage is kind of the sweet spot with this. Yeah. So, I mean, you could have someone like the Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, I feel like this works great on the wrestlers because they already have the move and attack. They generally can't be hit or shot from range, so they can get in close, do Blades Claws, and start dealing some penetrating damage. So, like, Ronda Rousey or Stone Cold or, like you said, Eddie Guerrero, like, they all have flurry. So they'll be able to kind of get in your face and be able to use this Blades Claws and then regen at some point to get back onto their you can't shoot me clicks. So I mean I think this has a decent chance on some WWE characters. Maybe not everybody else, but Right. Yeah, I mean the use case is pretty would it be, dang. Would it be decent on uh, on who? It would be decent on uh, Mortal Hulk. I don't think so because so here's where the thing is like Immortal Hulk is so much better with like Venom symbiote octopus yeah, arms. Yeah, there's other stuff better. Yeah, well, yeah, he has flurry on two clicks, but yeah. How yeah. important is penetrating damage right now? Kind of important actually, right? What is it? How important is penetrating yeah. damage right now? Um, I mean, anytime you don't get to enroll pervious, I mean, there is impervious out there. So that that's relevant. It's relevant enough. Maybe on uh, what's his face? I a opaque. A opaque. That that. that no, it's the Spider-Man guy or Dark Avengers. He came in that Spider-Man set, I think. A opaque. A I a p a e c. Yes. What? He's got the side set flurry, but makes I, I pretty close attacks instead of two. I think it's just anybody that has flurry and nothing else. This could potentially go on. Potentially. Well, like it's better than normal blades, like obviously, but it's not worth ten points on any team. I think. Well, you got the regen once per game too. I mean, yeah. that's useful too. Yeah. I mean, it's, nobody uses regen unless it's free or unimind. Uh, and unimind is very rare. It depends. I. I never, ever see regen used, except, like, Goblin King used it. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's it's a it's a low-use object because it's very niche in its application. And so expensive for what it mm-hmm. does. I, I think it's yeah. so So let's talk about the spear. Spear got a lot of use and a lot of play under Hawkeye. Um, is there a character that can make use of it being a ranged attack? Um, a range action uh, to make the uh, the Proxima Spear come back to uh, relevance. If we see more temples, then maybe. Why doesn't Jason use this? Because it's a range. It's its own specific range. It doesn't trigger off you making a range attack. Oh, uh, it's different. You have to use it as a range, right? Okay. Like, I don't see you yeah. using it you don't use it on, like, your main attacker. This is, like, a secondary attacker when you go against someone you just want to give a mobile and just be like, all right, I want you to just sit over there for a bit. I could yeah, see you using thing. it for that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this is the way to do a mobile if you want to do it because you got to do damage and do it. Right. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I don't... I mean, I'm trying to think of who nowadays would be a good carrier of this as a secondary attacker. Magneto? Um, be awful. It's the, it's, it's the range of six. That's the bummer part. It, it well, is I th- a little bit. I think, it, I think it's really good on the danger rooms because of the extra after effect. Right, it increases the damage mm-hmm. more if the mobile helps at all. I mean, at that point, going back to Corvus Glaive, that'd be good on the danger room Sabretooth. Just to potentially make him do penetrating instead of normal. Mm-hmm. I, 
No. Because, well, he has three damage, right? Yeah. So he's always doing one, unless it only gets through impervious, basically. Right, yeah, that's your impervious example. Yeah, right? I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, so, I think we can end our object review with what I think is the number one object, and that's the exospecs. Is it the number one? It's. I don't know if it's definitive number one. It probably. I don't know. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is now because it's very much less likely to get shot. That is true. Because right. it used and to be really good, but then it just got shot every time by Cyclops. Just be goodbye. So now someone has to go out of their way to actually try to shoot it. Do you guys right. remember when this object was like announced and everybody was like, "Oh my God, this is awful. This is like the second coming of Faust." Like I remember so much complaining about this ob- object. Right, it used to be sixty bucks, and I just sold my last like four of them for five dollars a piece. I think I still have four or five. Oh, I just found it for as a fun fact, I just found a whole set of two thousand, I think, eighteen cons in my drawer that I forgot about. Whatever Power <laughs> Woman came in, yeah. Hey, Power Woman's still going for like twenty bucks. Yeah, I got Power Woman, uh, Hot Girl. Have well, a, I think a I think we got a we got a bunch of those at the Rock Cup I think. Yeah, yeah. you could probably fuel your uh, Chipotle for a week with those. At least uh, I go through a lot of Chipotle, so we'll see. I'll, um, I'll buy your Power Woman, Tyler. Sell it to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yours, it's yours. So yeah. let's um let's think about the exospec. So things that make the exospecs better. Uh, WWE ring, WWE powers. Um, yeah. Um, if your team can get the jump on uh, Widows, it allows you the best possible move and attack option to attack Widows and dealing with Widows. Yeah. Um, so because if they erase your dial, if you can get the jump on them, you can have the best possible options to deal with them before they erase your dial. It's also the only other object outside of the Infinity Gauntlet to give us Pulse Wave. Yep. Which Pulse Wave is now mm-hmm. incredibly important because we don't have call in Pulse Waves anymore. Right. Yeah, Pulse Wave super duper important. Um, and I, w- I would say secondly, combining your Pulse Wave with Knockback is always really good. Um, so, um, you know, I think that's why I think that Exospecs is number one. Is it definitive number one? No, right. because it has downsides. Like, I think your number ones become, so from our discussion, right, if we were to wrap up, what kind of leads to be at number one would probably be, reality. Uh, reality Gym, Exospecs, um, and then any four of those rings, but in your specific use case, um, I think it comes out to be your number one objects. And for Tyler, number one is Christmas present. For sure, yeah. Obviously. And it, it's Christmas. It's 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 festive, you know. It makes you, puts you in a good mood. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> and sometimes you get crap. Sometimes, sometimes you, you get a KO. You get socks or something. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go through some of our questions. Um, Brian Poland, you know, we talked about uh, Mini Slayer uh, quite a bit there, um, and I think you're on the right track. Uh, Jeff Dumas, have you seen Chase Widow played with uh, Spy Master making a name, theme team, generic themed, or themed with Avengers? Uh, so I think themed with Avengers at the top. Um but I think Spy has its is its its playability. Isn't Spy Master just not good? Yeah, Spy Master is not good, so I think generic theme Spy and Jay Solomon uh, uh, chimed in with his team, which I like a lot. Yeah, Spy is definitely has a lot of good pieces. Yeah, so Chase Widow, Shifting Focus Widow, Prime Widow from ABPI. Oh, wow. uh, I think it's criminally underplayed right now. Yeah. Morph Prime. She's spy? Yeah, <laughs> yes. 
Morph Prime. Uh, hold on. I keep saying Morph Prime is going to be meta. I'm waiting for it. 25 <laughs> points. He does so much crap for 25 points. Yes. That's now, cool. Now, I also like the Rose um, from EarthX. Uh, the Rose gives you Prob, Leadership, Mastermind, uh, and Hired Flunkies. And uh, the Rose has Shape Change, and um, he can move his Hired Flunkies when he succeeds on Shape Change. And he has Stealth. Um, so cool. the, the Shifting Focus Widow. Um, so they were, uh, that's a little bit of Canadian tech. They were, he also has the Magia keyword. Uh, so they were playing him on um, with Vulture for leadership and prob on the Vulture team and a potential turn two leadership. Can we? It's kind of crazy. So you just said spy is a pretty strong keyword now. Yeah. Can we pour one out for our boy Chameleon, who was a great figure, but spy was really his only decent keyword and there were no good spy pieces for the longest time until he retired Nah, he got played he did no not nearly as well as he should have i ain't pouring nothing over chameleon he had his day barely a day <laughs> with sinister syndicate that was his only day and it wasn't very good it was okay <laughs> like it's just a, he, i've been waiting to build spy chameleon and i was like there's just not good t- pieces and i was like oh yeah spy's great and i'm like oh poor poor chameleon he had a had a chance chameleon was live with mystique that was a spy team he was here when nick was around right we had plenty of good spies uh, no he never got played with nick i I'm really got played with him but i'm saying he was like they had shared almost the same time spy man. yeah i agree that we're not we're not pouring one out for i am <laughs> He was a cool figure. I think he got played, though. He did not. Guarantee you, he did not. So, here, so McConnell Lamar um, asked, uh, what's the best way to deal with Chase Black Widow? Um, so, it, it's one of those things. Like, I, I'm just, I'm just, flo- I, I will say this. I'm absolutely floored by the lack of Batman in the online tournaments. I really haven't even been looking at all. Well, that's because you've been, you've been on, like, weird hours tyler i know i need to i need to start looking at what people are doing i think it's i winning a lot like it's has it been avengers it's been black widow captain marvel black widow captain marvel's been pretty much everything um oh the two figures that tyler said were super good hmm um <laughs> it's a, it's just for people yeah that double captain marvel like, i don't mean the that you had yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just because people like the mini shredder aspect of it yeah that's Really, really, I think well, Captain Marvel was good. Chase Widow puts her over the top. Right. So it it Captain Marvel's only good because IDs retired. So the only reason I disagreed with you was because IDs were going to stay around at that point. And unseen. Yeah, unseen's an issue too. But even if this post rotation included the Blackbird and Bounty IDs carrying carrying on like it should have. Um, then Captain Marvel wouldn't have been any good. So, Dan, to go back to your talking about Batman, why he's not seeing play, I think it's because Batman came out and he was almost instantly crowned as the most broken piece next to Vulture. And so people were already trying to almost not play Batman. Right. Because, Because they're like, it's just so broken, how can we counter it? And so Widow is a pretty good counter. But it, right. It's, so like, so the the team that won the last night win a map that was Caleb played um, of Wendigos, Tri Sentinels, Daredevil, Sheriff Strange, Alex Wilder on Ancient Hold. Um, that's a fantastic way to deal with Widow, as long as Batman's not being played. Wait, is that mystical? Yeah. It's a plus. It almost mm-hmm. beats it, doesn't it? No, uh, Widow, or like, no, I mean, yeah, I, it could. Batman's probably one or two higher. Maybe two to three higher. I think it's, it was a nine. What's so it, it, I think 11's key. I think 11's about base, so it's probably plus two over the mystical theme team. And then if you win, you almost instantly lose to it, probably. 
Yeah. Pretty close. Pretty damn close to instant lose to it. Yeah, I don't know. So. <laughs> so it, it's like it's one of those things like and it's 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 like and so this ties into what we talked about on the uh top bun of our sandwich tonight it's it's one of the reasons i have issues with counting all of the online tournament wins is because i know i should be seeing more batman and i, I know that it if I know that if, experiment more in online tournaments. That's correct. Yes. Um, they're not going to play the team they're playing for Nats necessarily. I, I can see that. There's an argument for that for sure. Yeah. Um, it's a, does any does it have anything to do also with the? I won't say the perfect Batman team has pretty much been figured out, but there's not a lot of variations on the Batman team. Like it's pretty much him and Dr. Fate and some of the others. So there's not a lot of mystery around him anymore. Whereas Chase Black Widow, it's like, well, there's still some mystery because she could go on this Avenger team, this Avenger team, or is it her with the shifting focus, her without it? Like there's so many options people are still trying to figure out, but Batman, it's like, all right, you play Batman with the Dr. Fates and the Wonder Twins, I guess, for Barrier. And like, it's, there's not that much change. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you there. But to, I, I don't really know what beats a Widow team. Like, she's, she's really, really, really good. And she does not have a glaring weakness at all. Like right. I, th- I, I think Swarm beats it, right? Like, I think the Mystical team has a good chance of beating it. I think uh, my Avengers team that I've come up with has a really good chance to beat it because I can instant knock her to stop click. I can deal with Captain Marvel's pretty easily. Um, but in my team might have other weaknesses as well. It has barrier, right? So if I think about my Avengers team, it has barrier, it has multiple perplexes on dial, or multiple probs on dial, uh, multiple, all of my powers are pretty much on dial. I'm not de- getting deleted a lot. Um, so, um, but my team might have problems with some other things. I don't know yet. Um, but I think Wendigo's is a good chance, right? Because you can just attack her three times in a turn and potentially, you know, or you can attack her like eight times in a turn, right? Right, if you get up there. Well, mm-hmm. she's she's coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Lord, she's coming. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. So, um, Jeremy Christie, um, writes in with new pin poison trouble alerts making trouble figures that can also do pin damage does wendigo's mystical and ancient hold become more dominant now that id cards are leaving um wendigo's were able to bring in one of each from each flurry free attack um yeah so i guess if a wendigo goes in and flurries and then free attacks it can bring in a let's start trouble figure um and then if another mm-hmm. wendigo hits then crit misses at some point it could bring in another figure yeah it's super not it's not out of the realm possibility at all to get yeah you might want to say that again Tyler. i think jason rubbed that across his beard again <laughs> I, I, with, with even like, if it's against any swarm team with Wendigos, you can get a let's cause trouble and a trouble alert figure in on one turn. Yeah. Could you get a trouble alert in if you crit missed on the first hit? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Well, wouldn't you die? Oh, yeah. You unless you steal energy, or is it? You steal alert. energy. Uh, no, you miss, would ha- it would have if to you be. If you crit miss, you you don't get steal energy because well, no, you you would have to be on the free attack. So you would have to flurry, uh, heal, do the free attack, then crit miss. Yeah. Um, that would be a way to do it. Um, so it's all about timing and right. anticipating a crit miss if you're a savant level. Um. Nice. So, <laughs> dice rolls. 
So, like, what beats Widow? I mean, I think a swarm team, you have to pump out a lot of attacks. Um, yeah, I could see that. Being yeah. A potential answer. Mm-hmm. You gotta watch out, though, because, I mean, she can call in some of the penetrating poison, so... Uh, just be only, that. For, only for one character, though, because Wendigos don't have a team ability. Yeah. So you just sort of have to be aware of that. Yeah. And neither does Daredevil. Um... I don't think uh, Doctor Strange does. Uh, Doctor Strange has mystics. Um, mystics. Yeah. Um, Wilder doesn't have anything. So it's, you know, you should. So if that happens, you should be able to pulse wave retail with tri sentinel. Because um, ancient hold's going to make it really hard for her to be able to use that pin poison guy super effectively. Right. Um. So, you know, and but my thought is that is all it's all a problem. That is all bad. Chase Widow's a problem. Batman's a problem. Ancient Hold is a problem. Like, this is a vicious cycle of all bad things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they're all degenerate in and of their own, and they lead to nothing being pure hero clicks post rotation. Wait, why? What? Why isn't that pure hero clicks? What? What makes pure hero clicks? I don't know. It's a good question. Ask the. <laughs> it is. Ask, ask all the people that are playing more because there's no ID cards. Well, it's a it's a pandemic. <laughs> no, they're not. They're playing in the <laughs> non. They're playing in the non ID card events instead of the ID card events. Oh yeah, I would do that too, just because I want to get post rotation practice at this point. There's no there's no events, but that's another thing to keep in mind is there's no events and we've got two more sets coming out before Worlds at least two, so don't all those who are worried uh, Widow's this gonna the rule man. the world we've got Fantastic Four we've got Carnage which Carnage could be nasty with items a lot and, of items yeah yeah so there's a lot of, I don't have hopes mm-hmm. for Fantastic Four because I, what. I, so, I, I'm not saying I don't like Fantastic Four. I'm saying WizKids, when they reintroduce a set, some for whatever re- a new license, like when they brought back X-Men after a hot minute, Uncanny X-Men was garbage. So I'm worried. I thought the starter set showed a lot of promise. Well, so, set. so Alex, I, I would say that I have a lot of hope that Fantastic Four and Carnage bring us. You know what? I was talking to PJ about this earlier today. You know what would be fantastic to get right now? Oh, God. I don't, this is going to be awful, isn't it? It is. It's going to be so <laughs> awful. Okay, go ahead. Jason's going to hate it. Yeah. What if we got, between the next two sets, a fresh copycat? Yep, that's yeah. That's about how awful I expected oh, it to be. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> copycat oh, is pretty close to Faust for me in levels of hate. <laughs> I mean, could you... Awesome. Am- could you imagine oh my just, God. just taking, you know what, though, guys, that would make your Corvus Glaive object yeah, more playable. I was going playable. to say that when we were talking about it. It's really <laughs> good in golden because it gets regen. <coughs> oh, man. Um, you know, like, so like this, like, moderate <laughs> level of degeneracy is not degenerate enough for me, really. I need like copycat level of degeneracy in my in my hero clicks play. Yeah. Well, don't forget we also have a second season of WWE. Also. Yeah. Yes, that's true too. There's and so there, there, there could be some nasty in there. It depend. We have no idea when they're if they're going to release some Con Ellies somehow, like the ones that were supposed to be at Nats. Whether they're going to do something with that. Is nobody playing Vulture in the online tournaments? I'm curious. Um, you're just not seeing play at all. Like not really, playing. no. Well, Scott Crampton hasn't been playing lately, so. Um, I don't know. It's gonna be like we do have two new sets, but it's just gonna be hard for them to come out with something that is can compete with things like Batman and Widow, and still like be. I guess good for the game, whatever that means to everybody. I mean, WWE counters Batman. 
Yeah, that's true. You just can't ever target them. And yeah. so having, well, how many is it? Like 15 more figures, WWE figures? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's got a lot of potential. True, true. And mm-hmm. more items means I mean, that more other figures could be potentially. Yeah. Like if we get one item, that, another item that gives us Pulse Wave, then we've yeah. got another instance where we could potentially stop Widow. Yeah, could set everything up. True. Because right now we only have two objects that can do that. And one of them we ranked at the bottom. <laughs> Wait a minute, what was the other one? To, uh, or the H style? No, no the Infinity Gauntlet. Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, the, well, I guess the H style could give you Pulse Wave too, right? So there's oh, technically three. Oh dang! Three. There's that with mm, three. Possibly. Yeah. Oh my god. Widow loses <laughs> the six yeah, Robbie like... Reeds Pulse Waving. <laughs> oh my gosh! Here it is, guys. Uh-huh. You play six Robbie Reeds. Um. Somehow. Oh shit! Here it goes, guys. Are you ready? You, oh, get, you have six Robbie Reeds. You roll three of them on the Pulse Wave. You roll one of them onto TK and then the other one onto Leadership. I don't know how all of that works, but you Pulse Wave Widow three times in a turn. I want to see the math on that. <laughs> right, the, you, math, the math on that does not check out, but man, would it be fun. And then when you're Pulse Waving her, you somehow hit the other three... Robbie Reeds, who are not activated yet, and now they're activated. And so they can then go <laughs> and use their H tile. Right. Well, his movement power gives him running shot, so yeah. It can happen. It can happen, boys. Oh, man. I'm going to build a Robbie Reed meta. Here we go. Just so we can stop Tyler. I'm just going to play full point Silver Server. Iversonic Pulse Wavy. Oh, that's, that's you know that's not a good idea. It's not a great idea. It's it is an idea. Yeah. Yes. That is until Widow deletes your entire dial except for Invincible. Um. Yep. Yeah, I yeah I see that now. Yep. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. Good, good luck the with the old drawing board. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with just your 19 Invincible on your dial. <laughs> And flight, you you get flight. Good good luck with that. Oh yeah. So she can only take care of yeah. one Robbie Reed, not the other five. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Storm attack. <laughs> you know I am not not mm-hmm. convinced of this idea yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the market of Robbie Reed is skyrocketing. You know, I might go buy my Robbie Reeds before I publish the episode. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna go look right now and just see how much just I... play the twenty, just play the twenty windows. Yeah, you bought them all. Come on. Actually, you know what? I'm down to nineteen right now. So. Oh my God. You never I even mean, you're gonna did win it. Map. Uh, so. You're gonna win map. You know, you're never gonna. You shouldn't lose you're... map again. You shouldn't lose map to Batman at that point. How viable that's is what I'm, twenty when he goes saying. on each and hold? How viable is it? Yeah. Oh, I think it's super viable. Right? The mystic- I'm the thinking mystic- about it. <laughs> well, they 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 have plenty of attacks to kill Widow, and Batman can't beat him on map. So very good. like maybe like eighteen of them in the in a tri sentinel. Well, so like uh, so I I don't think that maybe twenty two tri sentinel. Right, because so here's the thing: tri sentinel, it would be <laughs> able to carry tri sentinel is able to carry them up, yeah. and then activate. You know, the next turn, activate retail to clear a path for the uh, Wendigo to go charge Flurry. Man, that sounds super good. I, <laughs> I think that's a really good team. It, it, it is. I mean, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if anybody's curious, I did a YouTube video on exploiting Ancient Hold that explained a lot of this, um, at least from a brute perspective. Um, but a lot of the. Uh, of same things of same things apply. Um, I think I think you end up with something closer to um, uh, Caleb's team because like zero zero ring Daredevil leadership from Doctor Strange becomes super relevant. Now, is there anyone with mystical and leadership would be the only thing to say if it replaces Doctor Strange? Probably. I want to look real quick. 
Uh, no, I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, it's certainly up your idea. It's certainly up your alley, Tyler, because you're gener- you're generating a lot of attacks. Um, kind of like it. <sighs> Tyler, you're you're welcome. <laughs> now, okay, now that I just need probably thirteen more Wendigos, and I'll be good. Well, I mean, if we ever get those, uh, get that tri sentinel nerf we're supposed to get one day, maybe it'll even be stronger. There aren't any cheap ones. So I'm just looking for Era. mystical. No, no. Wait a minute. You know what? Oh, you know what? That's why that guy played Mira. Is it? Yeah. It's just 45 points, but she doesn't get it until her second click. Right, but you can activate people by pushing them or whatnot pretty easily for this situation, I think. All right, so Modern Age. You know, Doctor Strange is not showing up. That's why I don't think I'm doing this right. Uh, Does he have leadership? Uh, yeah, Sheriff, Sheriff Strange. He is as part of a trait, like, isn't he? Like, yeah, so Mystical Damage Power is leadership anywhere on dial. No, it's on dial. On same click. Let's see. Yeah, you know what? Doctor Strange is not showing up there. That's our Sheriff Strange. That's really weird. Um, he probably did put it in a special power. Uh, yeah, but no yeah. one shows up if you don't do that. Yeah, that's what I think. Something's wrong with Realms. Oh, so Modern Age. But yeah. Mystical. Yeah. Moltar, obviously. Oh, wait, no, that's rotating. No, Moltar doesn't. Miltar doesn't. He's a, he was in. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Mystical. Uh, search all special powers. Oh, Jennifer Kale's 33 points in Asa. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, she is good. And she's got really good support. Not that it matters with the team. Pool. What do you mean, Sheriff Strange isn't showing up? When he searched for leadership and. I I got it when I just searched it in special powers. Yeah. That's... Oh yeah 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's a train. Yeah, Witch Queen LaFay. Uh, Rebirth Wonder Woman? No, yeah. no, don't play her. <laughs> no, you Doom, know what? Baby. You know what? You know what? I'm I'm wrong. Rebirth Doc, Rebirth um, Wonder Woman is 75 points and she has a stop click. Yes. And she has leadership and prob. Um, and the, when she uses leaderships and succeeds, the character she removed an action token from can use prob until your next turn. Yes. Were you I, wanting a cheaper character than Strange? Is that what you're doing? Is that what you're going for? I'm just kind of doing some exploratory surgery. <laughs> Jennifer Kale would be the best bet. Solomon Grundy. No, I'm just saying, I'm talking mystics now. Oh, okay. You know Dr. what? Dr. Do- Doom's got a stop click. Dr. Doom, and he also has leadership. And I went. Rob on his stop. Pulse wave. Yep. Like that. Those yeah, are powers. Energy explosion that gives tokens. I don't hate it. What does Minions of Doom do now? Wild card, isn't it? No. No. Oh, yeah, they changed it. Oh, it's when somebody dies, that, he what? heals? He heals if he kills somebody. I think yeah. something like that. Yeah. Can I just hover it? No. This character K has a standard opposing character after resolutions. Heal one click on a friendly character using the team. Yes. That's yeah. it. I think it has a stop click with it. You know, uh, so I mean, Sheriff Strange obviously gives you the perplex and he's a good attacker and blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly something there with Mystical. Um, I mean, because what? You can get, uh, what? Five Wendigos for 75. Why did they give Dr. Three. Doom the Latveria keyword when he's the only person that has it? Well, there'll probably be more coming out in the next set. Maybe. I feel like they should have just done a Minions of Doom one. That would have been better. I mean, he's not a Minion of Doom. That's right. Don't. <sighs> why? How dare you suggest such insolence, Tyler? Doom is his own Minion. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, you know, mystical. I like that idea. Um, I think it's up your alley, Tyler. Especially uh, you've got Mojo that's mystical. I just like colossal stamina. I don't like being out actioned. I don't like having to stop. 
That's Can't what. Stop, won't stop. That's what she said. So you're gonna play a Batman team then? Does he have colossal stamina? No, you just yeah. have the fates. You have the yeah. you have that, and you have the fates with plus whatever to your action total. Yeah, yeah. Just for what it's worth, Prime Batman does have colossal stamina. That's dumb. That's really dumb. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's really not fun, guys. It's really not. Well, that's why it's no one's playing it. It's literally not fun. <laughs> Maybe. Right. But yeah, no, I mean, you know, uh, Mojo, you know, and that's another thing, right, is if you start missing, not only can you get the trouble alerts out, you can Mojo over and yeah. um, do something. Do something. Yeah. So there is something definitely there with Mystical. I, 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 I just can't keep getting out of my head that Batman's there. You know, the other option is four mojos. He, they just got out action. He's not out to the rolling. He's not on that. Stamina, though. Okay, so two onslaughts. Yes, I like two onslaughts. I really do. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's wrap it up with final thoughts today, Jason. Uh, I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> That's about all I can say for today. It's been a good episode, so I've been enjoying it. I, I worked I work today, and I've done. this is my second podcast of the day. I work today? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, it's Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to work okay. on Saturdays. <laughs> I just, the yeah. days are blending together. Tyler, um, final thoughts? Um, I got to start paying attention, I guess. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you do need to start paying attention. Yeah. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Right? Like, just let's sort of like ride it out until I have to pay attention again. Right. Like, so for me, it's like, you know, war. I, I don't want to open up a new segment, but like, world is probably the next obtainable goal. Right. Things are different. Maybe. And, I, and, I, and I'm ready to play, maybe. Um, and like, so if states happens over the summer, big if, obviously, coronavirus. Um, you know, if states happen, I think I'm reasonably prepared to go win a map. Right, top four gets a map. It's probably all I care about right now. Um, you know, so I think we'll know what the landscape is like at least six weeks before Worlds. And I can reroute, retool, crunch time for six weeks. I don't mind devoting 20, 30 hours a week to practice. Um, I, I've done it before whatever i've been made fun of for saying that it's not it's not it's not outside of the realm of probability two eight hour days on the weekends um and then three or four hours throughout the week the hours add up quick um you know i think i'd be totally okay with doing that over the course of six weeks before worlds knowing that that would be the next big goal um or wherever nationals happens to be if it's before worlds again big ifs uh, that's my final thoughts. Alex, thanks for being on. What's your final thoughts? Christmas present is trash, bottom tier. Hey, ho- no, <laughs> that can't be the last one. <laughs> yes, it True is. State. Thanks, True, everybody, True for State. listening to Click Stuff today. Yeah. We'll talk Shit. to you all next time. See ya.